Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. The city of Detroit wants to set the record straight about messages like this one promising people free houses. A major new push to reduce the amount of hidden sodium in the foods we eat. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, the changes the FDA wants to see manufacturers make and how they're hoping to do it without consumers even realizing what's missing. It was initially called an accident, but now, years later, there are criminal charges in the death of a man inside a local mall. The four men facing charges were security guards at Northland Mall in Southfield. A camera captured the 2014 incident in which guards pinned Mackenzie Cochran on the floor. He said he couldn't breathe and he died of position compression asphyxia. The Oakland County prosecutor at the time, Jessica Cooper, decided against charges. But in June 2020, Attorney General Dana Nessel vowed her office would review the case, noting similarities to the death of George Floyd. Sean Lay, live with today's new developments. Sean. Karen, seven years may feel like a long time ago for some folks, but not for the family of this man, Mackenzie Cochran. They'll never forget that day at the mall, though they live with these words every day. I can't breathe, I can't breathe, with security guards right on top of him. This case has now been not reopened, it's been ripped open by the attorney general. These guards have been charged, two are in court today. Do you understand, sir? I understand. That's Gavin King in the blue shirt being arraigned on involuntary manslaughter charges this afternoon for a tragic incident that took place seven years ago at Northland Mall in Southfield. King was working as a security guard. He and three other guards were videotaped, piling on top of 25-year-old Mackenzie Cochran and pinning him to the floor. Cochran pleading with the guard, saying, I can't breathe, before Cochran died of compression asphyxiation. King's attorney shocked that State Attorney General Dana Nessel has now brought manslaughter charges against those security guards. Jessica Cooper stating that there was absolutely zero evidence my client ever did anything wrong, and now here we are seven years later. The Oakland County prosecutor at the time, Jessica Cooper, found that Cochran was accidentally killed. But after intense protests and pressure, last year Cooper asked the attorney general to review the case. Another guard involved, John Cyberling, was also officially charged. He's now working as an officer at Henry Ford Hospital. His attorney wants him to keep working as the case moves forward. In his day-to-day -day, um, life at the hospital, in his employment, he uses a gun. I ask that if you do um, allow him, if, if you could allow him to use his gun at work. Bottom line, both men given personal bonds, but GPS tethers, so they won't be going anywhere, but their home as this case moves forward. The two other guards will be in court likely tomorrow. Uh, they were not in court today, and then Dana Nessel tomorrow is going to talk about this case. And she had said, guys, in the past that anyone, any jurisdiction, municipality that brings her a case that needs to be looked at, she's going to look at it and possibly charge if she gets new information. Back to you. All right. Thank you very much, Sean. New numbers from the state show the trend in new coronavirus cases continues to move upward. The state reports 8,671 new cases over the last two days. That's about 4,335 each day. 110 people have died from the virus during that same period, 58 of those from a vital records review. On the vaccine front, the state's vaccination rate is at 68.1%. Tomorrow, the FDA's independent advisors will meet to consider requests from Moderna to give booster shots of its vaccine. They'll discuss Johnson & Johnson boosters on Friday. Warren is in the process of putting body cameras on its police officers. And as part of this technology upgrade, they've added another wrinkle to crime fighting. Using crime fighting grants, soon the city will install cameras able to electronically check license plates. Local 4's Rod Maloney has the story. We're told these days that no matter where you go, you should expect that you're on camera. And you can see them everywhere you go. I mean, the traffic cameras are up here. Every party store you go to has a security camera. But it turns out there's room for still more right here in the city of Warren. Since the nation's founding, there's been a debate about balancing rights and security, and these pilot program license plate reader cameras will soon start popping up all across the city and will certainly get attention in that debate. 
Warren PD Corporal Brandon Roy tells Local 4. Almost all of criminal offenses, a vast majority of them, are involving a vehicle in some shape or fashion. Um, we certainly see that here in the city of Warren. The camera scan the license plate and the vehicle that drives by and compares what it captures with wanted or stolen vehicles or even stolen license plates. It connects to the Amber Alert system as well and officers can get a notice of a hit within 10 seconds. It is not some open surveillance system. This is not a facial recognition program. This is license plates and vehicles only. Uh, and they are stored in a secure database. It's encrypted. It's, uh, it, it stays for about 30 days uh, with flock safety and then it deletes permanently. It's not permanent. And when an officer goes in to query something in that system, they have to provide a reason that they're querying it. Resident reactions are quite similar. I can agree with that because then they're <laughs> taking protecting all of us. Sounds pretty good to me. And why is that? Because uh, if you're not legal, you shouldn't be driving. As long as they're not using it in a wrong way to actually find, let's say, you didn't wear your seatbelt or something. So they're going to ticket you for that, for example. OK, but if they're stopping you because they think this vehicle was involved in a crime, sure, why not? Now, they haven't bought the cameras yet or installed them. That's to come. They should be here in the next month or so. In Warren, Rod Maloney, Local 4. The Michigan ACLU today said technology like automatic license plate readers has the potential to track and invade the privacy of people's daily lives just in case they do something wrong. The group wants to see clear regulations to prevent misuse. Usually when the weather is odd, you know, unseasonable, something like that, we'll, we'll get the calls, we'll come into the newsroom, but I'm being told we haven't gotten any about the warm weather today. No, no one's complaining about this fall. <laughs> Nobody's complaining about this. Now, I have heard from some people that say, come on, bring on the cool stuff. I want the cool, the fall, the, the pumpkin spice latte. I want to go get my pumpkin. And, well, you can do that in any weather. In any event, here's a Mount Clemens sky cam. You can see some of the uh, mid and high level clouds that have moved in, but temperatures are still right around 70 degrees in many areas. These dew points are in the 50s. Those dew points will climb into the 60s by the time we get into tomorrow. And here you see we're dry, and this is a weakening area of showers. By the time it gets here, we're talking about just light rain showers, nothing violent, nothing to worry about tonight. And most importantly, our evening hours are going to be dry. We're going to be falling just slowly through the 60s this evening and clouds are increasing, but we're dry until midnight. But if this is your first newscast of the day, severe threat for Friday. We'll dive deep into that coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Okay, Paul. The fact that Americans consume too much salt isn't exactly breaking news. Medical experts have been pushing us to cut our consumption for years. However, it's easier said than done because most of it doesn't exactly come from our home salt shakers. It's already in the foods we buy. So today the FDA is taking some steps to help us regain some sense of sodium control. Dr. McGeorge is here with the changes we can expect to see in this. Hi, Frank. Hey, Jason. Yes, yeah, sodium in our food does play an important role. It actually acts as a preservative and it improves shelf life. But the fact is, the sodium content in food is higher than necessary, and it contributes to high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, and other illnesses. So the FDA is going to help with, well, some behavioral nudges. A major move new today from the FDA to slash salt from what you buy at the grocery store or eat at restaurants. Americans should consume about 2,300 milligrams of sodium each day. That's about a teaspoon of salt. Right now, most of us eat way more than that, 3,400 milligrams on average. But the FDA's new guidelines for processed, packaged, and prepared foods hope to lower that number to 3,000 milligrams a day over the next two and a half years. That would cut out the equivalent of 60 teaspoons of salt per person every year. We believe that sodium can be reduced in a way that people will hardly notice. Most of the sodium does not come from a salt shaker. It comes from the food, the processed food people are eating, uh, the restaurant meals they're consuming. And there's no way you can take it out of that tomato sauce or that salad dressing, it's already in there. The new recommendations aimed at more than 160 categories for food manufacturers, restaurants, and food service operators, from dairy to bread to baby food. For certain foods, it may be very challenging. For many foods, it may not be that technically difficult. It may be expensive, but it is nowhere near the toll that's taking on the American public in terms of disease. Now, a couple specific things to note. These changes are voluntary. The FDA is not requiring them. Also, 
They are meant to be gradual and modest for a few reasons. It allows food producers time to make adjustments. It allows our collective taste buds to adjust. And it really avoids the perception that this is being forced on the public. Back to you. Yeah, we hope it certainly has a positive effect. Doc, we appreciate it. Thanks. Well, the city of Detroit is putting out a warning about a man falsely telling people they have the right to occupy vacant houses. City says the scam is the work of Ramzu Yunus. Now, he was arrested last month after an armed standoff with Detroit police, but has since been released. The Wayne County Circuit Court has ordered Yunus to stop issuing fake deeds to Detroit properties. In a Facebook post from October 4th, Yunus says his group has begun taking over vacant Detroit properties and allocating them to people for free. He also asks for donations through Cash App for his very own police force. In an Instagram post from last year, Eunice promises you will be given a free home from among the hundreds of thousands of empty ones. In a statement put out today, Detroit's Corporation Counsel Lawrence Garcia says, Mr. Eunice is wrong about the law. There are no free houses in Detroit. Squatting and trespassing on property you do not own is a crime. Make it we're, clear. Yeah, we're back on the six with a new park in Detroit with a twist, and we mean that literally. There are twists and jumps and all sorts of cool stuff. We'll take you there in a few minutes. And next, one of these large exotic cats has escaped from his Oakland County home. The advice for pet owners and anyone who spots the animal next. 